Hi all, welcome back. In the last video, we saw that atoms are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons, that protons and neutrons make up the atomic nucleus, and that the number of protons, the atomic number, is the one thing that all atoms of an element have in common. In this video, we'll focus on electrons. As I mentioned last time, electrons are tiny, more than a thousand times smaller than protons and neutrons. Electrons orbit the nucleus at really high speed, almost the speed of light. They don't really take circular paths, like the picture shows. They dive bomb the nucleus, because electrons are negatively charged, and they're attracted to the positively charged protons. Opposites attract. But, as they get close to the nucleus, they also get close enough to one another that they repel, and they shoot back out away from the nucleus. So their orbit is more like a cloud around the nucleus and they tend to be rather far away from the nucleus. If the atom in the picture has a nucleus that is two centimeters across, that's about one inch, which is about what it looks like on my computer screen, then the electrons would be 30 meters or about 100 feet away. Atoms tend to have sm uh, similar numbers of electrons as they do protons. An atom that has the same number of negatively charged electrons as the number of positively charged protons will be uncharged or neutral. I'll often refer to this as an atom in the neutral state. Larger atoms have more electrons than smaller atoms. Those larger numbers of electrons have to spread out more because they repel one another. Electrons tend to organize themselves at regular distances away from the nucleus. We call these distances electron shells. The first electron shell is closest to the nucleus. It has a small diameter and only two electrons can fit in that shell. If you add a third electron, those electrons will repel one another and one of them will get kicked out to a farther uh, position away from the nucleus. The second electron shell is farther away from the nucleus. It is big enough to hold eight electrons. The third shell is even further away. Because of the complex geometries of the paths of the electrons, the third shell can hold uh, only eight electrons as well. The fourth shell is big and complex and can hold up to 32 electrons. The fifth shell can hold 50 electrons. The shells fill from the inside out because electrons are attracted to the positively charged nucleus and will try to position themselves as close to the nucleus as possible. Fortunately, biological organisms are made of small atoms, so we only need to focus on atoms with up to about three shells. Well, here's a quick challenge for you. Carbon has atomic number six. In the neutral state, how many electrons will that carbon atom have, and where will those electrons be located? If you want, uh, draw it out, pause the video, uh, and give it a go. Here's the answer to the challenge. In the neutral state, carbon has six protons, so it will also have six electrons. Those electrons will be distributed with two in the first shell and the remaining four in the second shell. For carbon, the second shell is the outermost shell. We call the outermost shell the valence shell. There are two characteristics uh, of atoms that have to be met for an atom to be stable. Neutrality, that is no charge. This means that the atom has the same number of electrons and protons. And a full valence shell. This means that the outermost shell of electrons has as many electrons as it can hold. It also means that all inner shells are also full. So here's another challenge for you. Which of the following atoms are stable by themselves? Hydrogen with atomic number one, helium atomic number two, lithium atomic number three, beryllium atomic number four, boron atomic number five, carbon atomic number six, nitrogen atomic number seven, oxygen atomic number eight, fluorine atomic number nine, neon atomic number 10, sodium, atomic number 11, magnesium, atomic number 12. If you're not sure, come to class and we can work these out. Otherwise, we'll end this video here. In the next video, we'll discuss how unstable atoms can combine with each other to form stable molecules.